folks. If I can not balance and not fall in here, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Right. Let me see if I can make this a bit more straight. Meh, that's going to have to do. Right, folks. Big bits. For fishing with big baits, you're going to need two things. A trace for big baits. And big baits. You're also going to need a way to get them out into the fishery. Which is behind me. So you take your big bit and your trace. And this is how we use the. Tr this is what we use the single hook for on the trace. It just nicks into the bait's tail and goes through the root of the tail, through the bow. There you go. If you did have to cast it, then the, the single hook takes all the force of the cast. But we're not going to cast it, we're going to use another way. And then you just slip your trebles into it, and that's your big bait ready to rock and roll. So we'll just set that down there for a second. And we'll get out part number two. which is our bait boat. This is how we're going to get the uh, bait into the swim. Because we're casting it, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're just going to use the bait boat. Hey, I'm just going to set this down here for a second. So I can load it up. I'm going to put the trace through the, the hopper. I'm not sure if you can see all this. Bit goes into the hopper, the trace goes out the back of the hopper, and I just fold it into the other hopper. You then put your, put your uh, hopper closed. You take your lead. That's not, I don't need that, I'm only using a four and a half ounce lead here. Try not to get everything tangled up. And you put your lead into the hopper. Obviously you don't do that because now you just trap the swivel in one of the hoppers, so. I'm going to have to do it again. Deserve a fucking cup of tea after this. Right. I had to do some. Uh, chopping to get the swim fishable because there was a lot of shit, debris, trees, plants. Then you connect your bait truss to your clip. And you should be ready to rock and roll.
No watch me try not to do those and fall with my ass. Right, that click in your hearing is the tension on the ring, the clutch of the ring even. You want to do this with an open bell arm as you don't uh, tear everything up. And away she goes.
my favourite ways to fish with a big bit is with a float with one of these. This is just a pencil float. The little vein helps you see it, it doesn't really do anything else but it's a visual thing. Because the big baits tend to be heavy, you don't need to put any additional weight on the line and you can often fish right in at your feet. A short flick of the rod out. Say you're fishing in 12 feet of water, you set a stop nut about 14 or 15 feet. So this is going to lie flat on the ground, flat on the water surface. So when you tighten the rod down, it's going to cock like that there. Now that goes straight from there to the bait. If a pike so much as farts on the bait, the float's going to show you. It's either going to dip under, or it's going to pop up and lie flat again. It's the most sensitive way of fishing with a big bait. But you have to watch it, you have to be on it all the time. No good throwing this into the water and then going off for a cup of coffee and ignoring it. Otherwise you get deep hooked pike. So float fishing, also a deadly method for big bits. But I'm going to show you another another method I like to use as well. Just put my float down there. The method I like using involves using one of these. This is a drifter float lads. Drifter floats are brilliant. Here I've got, this is main line is a 45 pound power pro braid. I have two little plastic stopper things instead of stop nuts. I have a bead, then I have the, the float. There is a controller. You can see there's like a bead. The little eye that pops on the top of the float, another bead. This is your controller that keeps the line away from the float to stop it tangling. Down to a bead. More ball bearing swivels and links. I fish everything with a link because it's easier to undo. This here is a 3 foot, 60 pound AFW wire up truss. The reason you use an up truss is you don't want the bait to come above, above your line. So if the bait you're fishing is live, and it swims up from your lead, there's still trace, there's still wire, so you're not going to get bit off. Here is a one ounce inline lead. That's just fixed permanently to the up truss. Uh, that's enough to cock your float. It's enough to sink your bait. Here, again, more links, more ball bearing swivels, and this is your bait truss. Bait truss is the same wire. This is a little bit shorter. This is only about 14 inches. Uh, again, American Fishing Wire Bleeding Leader. I either use Bleeding Leader or I use uh, Surf Strand. The only difference is Surf Strand doesn't have the plastic coating. Both good wires, both excellent products. And there's your there's your trebles. Now on that there you could fish your baits. You can drift a big dead bait. Big dead baits drifted out are a cracking method. But if you're in a place where you can fish a big live bait, this is also a killer method of getting the big baits out into the swim where the pike are sitting waiting. All depends on the window, lads. Like I said, drifter floats, brilliant floats, but if the wind's in your face, you ain't gonna do no drifter float fishing. The way it works when you cast it out, the little eye comes out of the silicone here. The float floats like this. The controller sits like this. So this float can turn and do its own thing. And I've just had a, a friendly dog jump into my other rod, so I'm going to have to go and sort that out. A bit of a heart attack there. I turned around and the big bait rod was bleeping. I was like, oh my god, here I am, I'm into a big fish. <laughs> it's your man's dog run through the lines. He's just picking up after the poo, so he's a good responsible dog owner. We like responsible dog owners.